Hi, my name is Jim and I was retired. This week the Fed met and paused on rates, but the real news was in the latest summary of economic projections by FOMC participants. Now, a lot of people were expecting a strong signal that the July rate hike was the terminal rate of this tightening season. So everyone was a little surprised when Chair Powell and the FOMC's infamous dot plot suggested one more rate hike in November or December. In this video, I'm going to tell you why I think July was the last hike. Despite the updated chart, I think that's all, folks. Stay tuned. Now, four times a year, the FOMC publishes its summary of economic projections. It gathers all the projections from the participants around the table, the seven governors, and the 12 leaders of the Federal Reserve Banks. And these projections include GDP and unemployment rates, but the, fo but the focus is often on the dot plot, which represents each participant's projection of an ideal Fed funds rate at the end of each year. In December 2022, all of the participants were pretty sure where 2022 would end, right where they had the Fed funds target at that meeting. But if you look over at the 2023 column, all but two thought that the Fed funds rate would rise above 5% by year-end 2023. Two participants thought the rate would be above 5.5%. And then in March 2023, four participants thought 2023 would end with the rate above 5.5%, and only one thought it would be below 5%. But then in June 2023, the SCP had dots that clearly show that most participants thought the year would end with a rate above 5.5%. None of them thought it would be below 5%. Now, this anticipated two more rate hikes, and we got that one in July, which brought it up to five and a quarter to five and a half. But if it's gonna be above 5.5, then there needs to be one more rate hike. Well, I really thought that these dots would change in September's report to say that the July one was the last one. I was really surprised to see these 12 participants say that they expect one more rate hike in November or December with seven content to stay where we are after the July rate hike. Then I thought it over. This is a poker hand bluff. The majority of the FOMC is signaling one more hike to keep the options open for November and December. But in December, we are likely to see a solid line right where we are now, just below 5.5%. If the plot changed in September, signaling that that was it, then the market would know not to expect any more rate hikes. But with this bluff, we are left waiting for the December SEP. And I believe the FOMC gave these readings just to keep us in suspense. By December SEP, all the dots will be just below 5.5%. But then there are two more surprising dots in the September dot plot, including this one participant who thinks in 2024, we will end with a rate above 6%. This is like a parent screaming, don't make me come up there and tan your hide. And then there was the longer run dots over there on the right for much higher inflation than the 2% target. Do these participants really think the Fed funds rate needs to be a point, point and a half above inflation target? Are their assets under management at Fisher Investments? All of these dots drive many people crazy, and some suggest it's time to blow up this whole graph and start over. But I think it really reflects the changing nature of policymakers around the table. There is a dovish complexion to the FOMC. Now, Congress created 
the Federal Reserve, and the FOMC to create a decentralized structure of public and private voices. The Fed has a dual mandate of price stability and maximum employment. People who call those who are more concerned about the labor market doves, and those more concerned about price stability hawks. Now, the president appoints the chair of the Board of Governors with the advice and consent of the Senate, and Chair Jerome Powell is the most visible face of the Fed. But there are six other governors around the table, also appointed by the president and approved by the Senate. The Senate recently confirmed a seventh governor filling out the Board of Governors. Now, to ensure that monetary policy represents the whole nation, Congress gave votes to five of the 12 presidents of the regional reserve banks in any given year. The president of the New York Fed always votes because that's where the desk is, but he votes along with four other presidents, and those votes change, rotate each year, so that voting members always come from different parts of the country. In 2023, the presidents of Philadelphia, Minneapolis, Chicago and Dallas are voting members. Now, of those current votes, only three, two governors and one president, are considered hawks. Now, in 2024, Richmond, Cleveland, Atlanta, and San Francisco will vote with New York. And only Loretta Mester in Cleveland is considered a hawk. Now, the rest of the folks around the table are largely considered to be doves. Now, there are two remaining unknowns. There's an empty seat in St. Louis while they look for a president, and there's a brand new president in Kansas City. But they, along with the president in Boston, won't vote until 2025. Now, even if you consider Powell a hawk, and some do and some don't, most of this table is filled with doves. Now, that's my vote on doves and hawks, but I'm not alone. Most policymakers disavow the labels hawks and doves. One former Fed policymaker preferred to be called an owl. But Fed watchers have assigned these labels, and I showed you this chart back in February from InTouch Capital Markets. Now, they updated it in July, but it still misses some of the newer participants. And they think Dallas, Richmond, and San Francisco are hawkish, but I would think of them more as centric doves. Now, I'm not an economist. I'm just an avid Fed watcher, um, and I'll conclude with my standard warning. I have no initials after my name, so take these as entertaining ideas from one educated consumer to another. Always do your own due diligence and seek out a professional if you need one. See you next week.